Uh, in just a moment, you'll have the privilege of hearing Travis Allen uh, present. If you would, take a moment, just check your cell phones and make sure they're on silent. It'd be much appreciated. Before graduating high school, Travis Allen created a viral YouTube video on revolutionizing education in America through mobile learning. Today, Travis is a sophomore at Kennesaw State University where he runs his growing nonprofit organization, the iSchool Initiative. Working closely with students and free enterprise organization at KSU, he has been able to turn his vision into a reality with schools all over the world adopting the iSchool Initiative's mobile platform. This young visionary manages a team of 30 people who are touring the country providing engaging and exciting seminars for students and educators to motivate them to embrace becoming lifelong digital learners in the information age. Travis is quickly becoming one of the leaders in the emerging digital learning revolution. Please welcome Travis. How's everybody doing? Good, good. I've enjoyed the conference so far. Uh, as he said, my name is Travis Allen. I'm a sophomore at Kennesaw State University, and I'm a business management major, and I'm also the founder of iSchool Initiative. So to start our presentation today, I was actually going to use a program called Poll Everywhere, and I can see a lot of you are al already familiar with it. But what I'd like each of you to do, if you haven't already, is pull out your cell phone device. And what, what this is, it's an interactive way to ask a question and get live feedback from the audience. So you can see some people already have, but what you're going to do is you're going to text the number 37607, and you're going to text it one of these codes based on the answer. So the question is, how familiar are you with you using your iPad or an iPad if you don't have one? And the uh, responses are, how do I turn it on? I check my email and browse the web, but that's about it. I have several apps and use it almost every day. And last, I have my iPad make my coffee, fetch the newspaper, teach me Spanish, and take my dog for a walk all before 9 a.m. I want to know how these four people have their iPad make them coffee. But uh, so if you haven't already, just text your answer. And uh, this not only helps me as a presenter because it gives me feedback on the level of proficiency with the iPad, but as an audience, you can see where people stand on whatever question you ask. Now, this is the free version, so because of that, it only takes the first 30 answers. And then if you want more than that, you've got to pay for the program. So there's probably already 30 people who have done this, and so it, it's not going to be live anymore. It's just stopped after 30 people. So this gives me a good idea on what level people are at with their iPads. Now, how did a 19-year-old college student end up here in front of you. That's what I'm here today is to share you with you my story on how I am a mobile learner. I take my iPad and only my iPad to every single one of my classes. I do not own a printer, books, paper, ink. I am a completely digital learner. And you're about to see how that's possible and how I do this every day. Now before I go into the iPad, I wanted to briefly talk about iSchool Initiative, what it is. If you attended my first session, that's what it was all about, so I'm sure you're familiar with it. But just for those of you who uh, did not see it, uh, iSchool Initiative is a student-led organization dedicated to bringing technology solutions to the classroom. And I founded it in high school when I started using my iPhone in all of my classes to take notes as a graphing calculator and to read books. But I quickly became frustrated with the education system because they told me that this was not an educational device. And this infuriated me. And so I decided to do something about it. I created a, one to, a YouTube video demonstrating the capabilities of a one-to-one -one iPod Touch program. Imagine if every student had an iPod Touch, what could you do in the classroom? Since then, this video has gone viral and I'm here today. And again, you can watch the, the video on our, our website if you choose to. But we have started a digital learning revolution a grassroots movement of parents, students, and educators coming together to demand change in our classroom. Because if we're going to have change in our classroom, it's not going to happen with the current system, with the bureaucracy and different things like that. It's going to take a movement of students, parents, and educators to come together and demand this change. And that's what iSchool Initiative is leading. 
So that's a little bit about iSchool Initiative. I have a team of about 30 students all at Kennesaw State University. We fly around the country providing seminars, create YouTube videos. We're working on an e-magazine called Go Digital, which is about going paperless and the future of education. <clears throat> and now I would like to walk you through how, as a college student, I use my iPad every day to revolutionize the way I do education. And I want this to be very interactive. So if you have a question uh, during the presentation, feel free to raise your hand and I'll try and get to you. And uh, if we're running out of time, then I'll just say we'll, we'll keep moving on. Okay, so the question was, how is the iPad connected to the projector? If you're not aware, iPad 2 came out two weeks ago. It was very high on demand. And one of the number one reasons I waited four hours in line at Best Buy to get it <laughs> was for this feature right here. So before the iPad 2, how I projected it was a dot cam. But now, with the capabilities of the iPad 2, they, have, they sell converters to VGA and HD. So you buy this $30, $40 adapter, and it allows you to plug in. Oh, there it goes. Unplug it. It allows you to plug into a projector and project your screen live on the projector. Very handy, especially in the classroom. Now, what I'm waiting for, which is what Steve Jobs does in his presentation, is wireless projecting. Imagine being able to go to a student and handing it to them and work a problem on the board. And that's what I'm excited for. So, how do I use my device every day in the classroom? I'm going to go over just a few of my favorite applications as a student. And again, we can have a discussion more and we can talk about the different applications uh, in the end if we have time. But a lot of people ask me, first and foremost, how do I stay organized as a student on the iPad? And I use an application called iStudies Pro. And what I don't like about a normal paperback agenda is when you write something in it, you've still got to go back in and check it so I still miss my deadlines because I never go and check it. You know, and I'm sure all of you ex have experienced this. But with this application, I click on assignments up here, and it tells me all of my assignments for the whole semester on the right. So I've plugged it in at the beginning of my semester, and I can check it off when I'm done. But what I like about this is it sends me a text message alert saying, you have homework due tomorrow. So it's an agenda that keeps me in check. <laughs> And, and for someone like myself who travels a lot and, and does presentations like this, I've got to do my homework on the go. And you can see I'm missing class right now, thankfully to this conference, but I can still work on my homework and do things and keep up to date with applications on my mobile device. So this is one of my favorite ways to stay organized. It's really easy to add an assignment. You would just click the plus icon and you can add an assignment. And again, you just check off something and it will be completed. So this is one way, as a student, I stay organized. Next question I get a lot is, well, how do you take notes on this device? And most college students, I'll tell you right now, how they take notes is they write pen and paper, they write bulletins. And to me, this is not efficient. How do you take bulletins and then study it for a test? It's very hard to do if, you've, if you haven't tried it. And a lot of times you want to take those notes and turn them into flashcards. But me as a student, before I had this, I never took the time to go buy flashcards, to rewrite all my notes into flashcard format, and it just wasn't an efficient method. And so what I do for most of my classes is I take notes by building flashcards while the lecture is going on. So here on the left, you'll see my classes, and let's just go to Business Law 3, for example. Here are all my notes for one test for that class. And they're really easy to create. All you do is, during class, I hit the plus sign. And on the front, he'll maybe talk about larceny. So I say, what is larceny? And you can go back and edit. And then I'll put you know, the definition. And that's how I type all my, my cards. And then I just hit the Add button. And it starts with a new flashcard. So I build these really quickly while the class is going on. And what I like about this is, say I'm on the bus, say I'm waiting at the bank, wherever I am, I am taking learning on the go. I am learning beyond the classroom, and I can pull this out and study. And what it will do is it'll ask the front of the question, and I will hit show answer, 
and I will see if I know it. If I did not know it, I'll click incorrect, and it will repeat that flashcard until I memorize that card. So when I study for tests, this is usually how I study, and when I have study group sessions with my friends in classes, I'm usually the one leading the discussion because I have these type of notes. So this is just one way I take notes, and I usually like taking notes this way in classes like business law, where you have a lot of definition terms and things like that. There's also flashcard apps that you can type in a word on the front, like larceny, and it will automatically put the de definition on the back. So imagine how fast you could pump through flashcards and build them real quick to fit your curriculum. This is called Cranberry, and I'll let you know right now so you don't have to sit here and write all these. You can go to iSchoolInitiative.com and go to Educational Applications, and from there, you get a link to iTunes with all the applications I feature today. And that's what I would suggest doing rather than trying to write them all down. Another great reason for going digital. <laughs> so, like I said, that is not the only way I take notes as a student. A lot of uh, classes require documents or some sort of, you know, essay type format, and I use Apple's Pages for this. And you're about to see actual, and let me close out of this so I don't give away anything awesome yet. So here are my different documents, and let's just go to a study guide I built, for example, and I think it's right over here. We have accounting study guide. I built this in class while he was reviewing for the test. And I'll just go to the top. So I created different example problems in accounting. I can edit it easy. I can move stuff around. And as we go down, I've got my whole test right in front of me. So this is what I study for. And I built this again all in class. And it was, it was very easy to build once you get the hang of it. Now what else you can do with different programs like this my HPS class, we had to build a fitness log. And this fitness log had to be over the whole semester, and it accumulated uh, chapter, uh, going over chapters, uh, pedometer log, and different things like that. And everyone's printing off everything they do and stuffing it in this binder, and it's just full of paper. And I asked my professor, I said, will you let me turn in a completely digital copy? And he said, absolutely, that sounds great. And so I will show you it now. It's right over here. It's the Fitness for Living log. And I'll go to the top. So I'm going to go ahead and flip it this way. There we go. OK. So I have my cover page. And I simply input a picture. And as we go down, I have my table of contents. I have my um, summary of chapter one imported pictures right away, really simple to use and, and edit. And as we go down, I took a uh, lifestyle test and I have graphs and bars and numbers representing what the information we went over in class, all in an easy to use uh, format. As we go down, section two that I went over, and if we keep going down, here's a lab I had to turn in. And okay. So here's the pedometer part of the log. So we had to create goals and different things like that. So I easily created some tables with my goals, and I also showed some statistics of the average student, how much they walk, and, and so on. And I just did a search on Google and put it in right, the numbers in right there. So here is my fitness log. So most people just have a list of numbers they put in, and they turned it into the teacher. But what I did was I put it into a, an, um, an, uh, kind of like an Excel sheet, and it's called numbers. And set it to build a graph. And so the green bar represents my goals for how many steps I'm supposed to take every day. And the blue bar represents how many steps I actually took. So I can easily, easily see at a glance the did I achieve my goal or not. What else I did is we had to build a fitness program where we had to create a workout. So again, most students are writing down, I'm going to do this for 15 minutes, I'm going to do this. Well, I have another application, and that's what this image is. It is. It's a screenshot of another application I use. With this app, I could build my own workout sessions. They had a list of what works out what. It, each one included a video of how to do the workout properly and not hurt yourself. And so I was able to build a full workout, and it would send me alerts saying when I should work out and what I should work out for the most efficient workout session. And if we go down, here's another image with picture, instructions, video, and different workouts. So this is how I turned in my assignment. I also have an, a health application that tracks how many calories I burn and how, what I'm eating. And again, I just took a screenshot 
and put it in this pages. And so now I've, become, I've created a completely digital log that I'm turning into my professor. He was so happy with it, I'm actually presenting it to the classroom tomorrow. So, <laughs> so that's pages. And that's just a few ways that I use the iPad every day to take notes in my classes. Now, the iPad can go a lot farther than just that. And what I'm about to show you is one of my favorite applications. Many of you might be familiar with it. It's called Starwalk. And this is what I like about the iPad, the, these interactive applications that really get you engaged. So right here we have a breakdown. It has a GPS location that locates where we are and it tells us wh what the moon phases are, the exact time the sun will rise and set. But we're gonna close out of this and we're going to look around and it's literally a map of all the stars around us. We can move around. If we look south, that's what we would see. And as we go around, I can click on anything, get information on it. But my favorite part about this application is watch what happens when I hold it up. And hopefully the cord doesn't, there we go. So it's, it's a live feed. That's what we would see if we were looking that way right now. And as we move around, that's what we would see in the sky behind the iPad. And students love this. So imagine learning about the stars through an application like Starwalk. Imagine just giving this to a student and they take it and they do what they want with it. They explore wherever they want and they learn what they want. And that's what we really envision and that's what we're so excited about. You can do things like time travel. You can, oh, this is upside down. We can go to um, scroll through time to see where the planets will be at a certain time. And uh, we also have picture of the day and several other things that the application allows us to do. So again, this is Starwalk. This is one of my favorite applications on the iPad. <clears throat> now, uh, just uh, as some other things that I do on the iPad, uh, I get news via my iPad. I don't watch the news anymore. I don't read newspapers. I don't, I don't do any of that. I choose the content that I want to see. And that's how I think you're going to see students start to learn is they're gonna choose what news they're interested in and automatically get it sent to them rather than them having to go on the news and find out what's interesting to them. So the CNN app, for example. And I gotta feature CNN because they featured me two weeks ago, so I'm just returning the favor. <laughs> and we look on here, and this is just all the top stories in a video format. So I can click anywhere, I can maybe talk, go to something about Japan and just start watching videos on here. You know, we can click any story, and of course you're gonna get the five second ads. And after the ads go away, you'll get the story and video. The Shinomaki City Hospital is in the heart of the Japanese tsunami zone. You might assume it would be overcrowded with the injured. So, what I like about this is on my phone, I have the CNN app as well. And I've picked stories that I'm interested in, like iPad, iPhone, technology, you know. <laughs> I'm sure you can assume what I'm interested in. So what it does though, is it tells me the stories that pertain to that subject. And that's what I really like. And again, that's about finding content, bringing content to me that's important to me. And I get text messages on my phone from CNN saying, breaking news. And so I'm always up to date without having to go to the news, it's all on my phone. And that's where you're gonna see a lot of news going. And that's, that's how I access all my news. And that's how a lot of your students access news. So, uh, biggest question I get a lot is textbooks. Uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people ask me, well, how do I read my books? Well, as far as novels go, and uh, for example, my world um, literature class, we had to buy nine novels that we were gonna read that semester. And uh, it was around $120 total for these books. Most of these were classics though. And I got 90% of them free on here. And so I spent about $5 for those nine books. And I can open up any book right here. And you can see it's just like a, a real book. And what's really cool is we can turn the page We can adjust the text size, 
fonts, different backgrounds. You can really personalize it, which is also a great thing. Now, let's say that you are reading and you want to add a note. You simply go highlight something and you can highlight it or you can add a note and you can say something like, this will be on the test. There you go. So it adds a note right there. I can bookmark this bar, this page, and right there, it's, I, have, I can go to my table of contents and see all my bookmarks, all my notes, and jump right to it. Now, what I really like about this, though, is let's say I'm reading, and I don't understand what a word means. I can simply highlight it, click dictionary, pops up a dictionary right in the middle of a book. And this is what, you know, adopting this technology is all about, the simplicity of using stuff like this to where I can easily define any word without going to pull up a huge dictionary, spend 20 minutes to look it up. As a student, I never looked up anything because it took too long. But now, now I might actually do it. So again, this is just a fun way to read books. And, and a lot of people say, you know, well, why iPad and, and not computers and stuff? Well, how many of you here have read an ebook on a laptop? Anyone here? Okay, a few of you. It's terrible. I hate it. Every other student hates it more than I do. And once you go to something like an iPad, it's like reading an actual book. I can lay in my bed and flip through the pages and read it. And I have my whole library with me everywhere I go. And that's also another huge benefit is having access to your books 24-7. Lifelong learning, which is what we're all about. So again, this is iBooks. Now, a lot of um, people ask, well, what about my textbooks? So I get some of my textbooks from e-textbooks, and what I don't like about it is all it is is changing the textbook into a digital format. It's the exact same thing. You're just flipping through a page, and it, nothing's changed. And we're seeing that right now, but I'm excited. I'm way excited for when books start to become completely digital and not designed around a hard copy, but designed around the technology that's available right now. And so imagine a textbook that comes to life. Imagine giving a, a textbook, on, on a digital textbook to a student that has video, that has audio, that has gaming, that's interactive and keeping the students engaged. And that's what I'm excited about. But like I said, right now I get the, the normal textbooks on e-textbooks. And a lot of my college books, I would say 90% of them have digital books so far. Again, that's college. I know it's not that high for, for high school, elementary, middle school. But I can go to the website. For example, we'll go to my accounting book. So I go to the website. I log in real quick. And what also is missing is the ability to download these books right into your iBooks, which is another thing we're excited for. Uh, you know, I'm, th I'm predicting two, three years before digital textbooks really become fully functional on, on these devices. But again, I don't buy any of my books unless they're digital, and I find most of my books are on here. So I can go to the book, and this is also how I do my homework. Uh, McGraw-Hill does the Connect, and they have an application to where I can do my homework from my phone. It's, it's uh, multiple choice questions we have to do every week for one of my business management classes. And in HPS, we had to walk a mile, uh, just go around and walk. So I had my phone out, I was walking a mile, and I just did my homework while I had to do the mile walk. And so I was doing two classes at once, which is very efficient for someone like me who has a busy schedule. So again, here's my homework. I can go to anything and start doing my homework. But if we go over to the ebook, here's where you'll see you can jump to any chapter, you can jump to any section, and all I can I can hide this, and there you go. I have my textbook right there on my iPad. So let's jump to any section. Let's just go to. So it jumped right to it, and I can turn it again, like I was doing earlier, and there we go. I've got my text right there. What's really cool about this, though is let's say I like a chart and I really want to keep it and remember it. There's a feature on the iPad that lets you take a screenshot. I'm going to press this and this at the same time. So 
right there, I took a screenshot, and it's in my photos. So I saved that table of contents into my photos. So that's what I've actually done in a lot of my classes. When I want to save something from the book, I'll take a screenshot of it and put it into a page, for example. I can take a screenshot of anything. It just clicks, takes a screenshot of the screen. All the iPhones, iPods, uh, I, they all have that functionality. And they always have, but most people don't realize that they can do that. And that's a huge feature as a student that you can use every day that is really helpful. So this iPhone, yes, it's, it's doable on the iPhone as well. Like I said, most people don't know you can do that. And it's, it's a very useful tool. Like, for example, in the Pages app, you saw that I had imported pictures right in the page from other apps. That's how I did it. I took a screenshot and put it in that page. <clears throat> so now we have uh, another really fun application. <clears throat> so she asked, is this uh, taking up space? And no, everything I do is cloud computing, meaning it's all saved on the web. I can pull all my notes on this computer, on your computer, on my iPad, anywhere I am, on my phone, I can have my notes with me 24-7. And so I have the 16 gig iPad, which is the smallest size, because I don't need space. Everything's saved to the cloud. And uh, what I tell people also is I can take this iPad and throw it out the window and go light it on fire or something and go get a new iPad, plug it into my computer, and it will sync everything over as if I never lost it. Now what happens if you're carrying your notebook and you drop it in a puddle? It's gone. If you lose it, it's gone. But the information and the notes I have, I will have with me forever. And they will always be there, easily accessible. So now uh, we have the elements. <clears throat> and let me go to the home screen. This is an intera interactive periodic table. Imagine students in science picking this up to learn their, their elements. Let's click on nitrogen, for example. Interactive, easy to use, tons of information. It's a chemistry book that comes to life and makes science actually interesting. You can get more information on it. You can mess with the objects. And of course, probably my favorite part of this application is the awesome song it comes with. Yes. There's antimony, arsenic, aluminum, selenium, and hydrogen, and oxygen, and nitrogen, and rhenium, and nickel, neodymium, neptunium, germanium, and iron, americium, ruthenium, uranium, europium, zirconium, lutetium, vanadium, and lanthanum, and osmium, and astatine, and radium, and gold, protectinium, and I have all these memorized in this song. I'm just letting you know. And iodine, and thorium, and thulium, and thallium. There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium. We'll stop it there. I promise I'm not going to play the whole thing. We might be here a while. But again, just take this concept and apply it to all fields, not just science. You know, imagine how this could change all subjects. Also, graphing calculator. That's one I talk about a lot because most students have iPhones and yet they pull out their $120 graphing calculator and I just laugh because they just wasted $120. This application is $1 and it replaces your graphing calculator. So again, look at the cost saving just from $1 application that this provides. And what I like about this, if you have ever used a graphing calculator, to zoom in and zoom out, you've got to go plug in coordinates and it's just awful to use. With this, you simply pinch and pull. And I can zoom in, I can go anywhere I want, I can add my own equations, I can do everything the graphing calculator does. And so, again, uh, this is an awesome money-saving application that, that we talk about a lot at iSchool Initiative. <clears throat> so, uh, the next application is my new favorite, just came out with the iPad 2, and that is GarageBand. And I am not musically inclined at all, but I don't need to with GarageBand. That's the beauty of it. You can be tone deaf and actually create something on it. So.
when you load it up, it's got several different instruments. Um, let me just go to... This is a track I made in 15 minutes. The day I got it, I made this in 15 minutes, and I'll play it for you in a minute. But what I want to do is show you the different instruments on it. So let's just start with the guitar. Phone is making noise with the device. Okay, so we have right here an acoustic guitar. And we can simply play the normal strings. And let's get audio all the way up. You can bend the strings, you can play different notes. And again, I don't know how to play guitar, so don't judge me. But we can switch to the, the chords and strum. So we can go. Again, I just, you know, I could sit here and play with this forever, but I'm sure you don't want to listen to it. But you can do, it comes with um, chord, chords you can play. So let's just turn this to four. Let's say we don't want the acoustic guitar. Let's say we want a electric guitar and we want to <laughs> You can have fun with this. I promise you I've spent way too much time on it already. So what other instruments do they have? They've got uh, pianos, drums. Um, let's just go to <laughs> I heard that. Let's go to the piano. And we're going to go to... This is preset once, and then you can switch it to um, a full keyboard. Uh, told you it's a new application. I haven't messed with it that much. Well, I'm going to actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to drums. Does anyone here play drums? Can I get a volunteer to come up here and try and play the drums on here? Great. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going we're to have a battle of the bands up here. And I'm going to play something on the drums and he's going to try and top me. I think we can all agree I definitely won that. Just saying. <laughs> so he's never even played with an iPad before, but he was able to get up here and just start drumming along on it. It's very, very easy to use. Now I'm going to play the song I put together using piano, two drum sets, and a guitar, and a I think I said a cello already. But that's what, what, what I used in here, and we'll go ahead and play that real quick. Oh, hold on. We changed the guitar so it sounds different. Can't have a hard rock guitar with this. Okay, let's try one more time. So, <laughs> like I said, 15 minutes to create that, and uh, you can add vocals, you can do a lot more with it. Obviously, I've just, I've just messed with the application a little bit, but 
students can create, and which is sorely needed in our education system. They're able to create on this device, which is another part I love about what this can bring to the table. So that was GarageBand. Yes. Uh, okay, so let me just clarify. Are you saying print it so you can play on here or just print after you create it on here? Okay, so let's say her question was, how can you print this if you want to duplicate it outside this? Well, again, remember there's, there's several ways to do this. But take a screenshot of the picture and then you can email that picture any way you want. Really easy to use, really easy to send it. And it also gives you the notes. If you go into the, into the different pieces, it will give you the notes. So that's how you could send it to yourself. And as far as printing, if you have to, I'm not going to shun you if you do, but <laughs> if you have to print, then it, it has a wireless app printer that lets you print from your iPad wirelessly to a printer. So um, that was GarageBand. Uh, the next application, uh, I can't actually... Uh, use here. It's, I don't know if I'm being blocked. It's Dragon Dictation, but okay. I, I, I assume that might be the case. So Dragon Dictation, I'll just briefly, uh, many of you might be familiar with it, but what it does is you can talk in it and it types everything you say. And so in my presentations, I just show myself talking in it and it will type everything and then I can do anything I want with that. But what a lot of people don't think about is you can set it to other languages. So imagine setting it to Spanish, for example. And let's say you meet someone who only speaks Spanish. Well, you can hold up your iPhone, iPad, whatever it is, to them and say, would you speak into the device? And they would talk in it. And then you can, t you can select what they just said in the text and put it into the free translator app. And right then, you're having a dialogue with someone who does not even speak a mutual language. And so it's, again, it's just things like this that really change uh, the way we do education, the way we communicate, and the way we learn. <clears throat> Other applications, um, like I said, I've got a lot on here. Um, you know, I've got Numbers, Keynote, uh, Wolfframe Alpha. Who here has heard of Wolfframe Alpha? A couple of you. It, um, it's a pretty, it's actually a web-based platform, and I just, you know, if you haven't looked at it, it's pretty extensive. You can, you can do a search on any two things, like they could have no relation at all, or you could do like South Africa, America, fish. You type those three topics in, and then it can cross-reference everything that has to do with those three subjects. Yes? So, uh, you have mm -hmm. Right. Right. So, so your question is, um, as a teacher, if I have an iPad, how can I benefit my class if just I have an iPad? Okay, so a lot of people ask me this question because what my team and I do is at Kennesaw State University, we do faculty training uh, for all the faculty there who almost all have iPads, but obviously their students don't have iPads. So we primarily focus on how they can use it to better and simplify their lives. So first I would suggest to you, well, how can you use it personally to simplify your life? And second of all, I would show you things like the attendance application. One of my pre professors who has an iPad loves the attendance application. He can randomly call on people. He has everyone check who they're here, who's there or not. Um, but how can you use it in the classroom? You're absolutely right. Google Earth is a great way. We've actually shown how you can use Google Earth. And 
It's just like a computer. Also, you know, graphing calculator. If you're in math, projecting the graphing calculator onto the screen is very useful when you want to work with it in math. So really, it depends. That's a very specific question because it depends on what you teach and how you would like to use it. And uh, so y the, the idea is that every student has these devices and they can take it home. And iSchool Initiative really promotes one-to-one -one programs because if you, go to if you have a classroom set of iPads, for example, you're missing out on about 80% of the capability of these devices. Because the idea is not to go into the classroom and use just elements when you're in the classroom to look at the periodic table. It's about taking this home, having it be yours, having your notes on there, having all the resources in your books accessible 24-7. And, and that's what, why we promote a one-to-one -one program uh, as opposed to, say, a classroom set of iPads. And uh, actually, uh, now I'd just like to turn the rest of the time over just to questions. Uh, now is your chance to kind of pick my brain. Again, this is the student perspective on how I am a mobile learner. So I would love to hear all and any questions. Is there anything like PowerPoint that can be used on this? Yes. There's Keynote, which is Apple's version. And I just wiped my Keynote, so I don't have any uh, presentation saved on here. But it's really easy to edit and add images, and you can see um, we can click on anything, we can rotate images, it's really easy to replace. But this is how I build my presentations. And instead of PowerPoint, I have Keynote on here, and then you can simply project it on the screen. What you can do is if you go to My Presentations, and this is the same with Pages, you can go to Email, Presentation, right there, Email it as a Keynote PDF or PowerPoint format. So you can have all formats on there. It will, um, you could put a PowerPoint in it, it won't come up right though. It's, you know, two different um, uh, presentations, so it won't, it won't look right, but you, you could. It does not have a USB port, and people, a lot of people are like, ah, I want my USB port. But, you know, uh, I would just like to say that, that flash drives are out of date. Those are old technology. <laughs> <laughs> it's... <laughs> Flash drives are, and CDs, things like that. Again, everything I do is cloud computing. I email my stuff, so I email my documents to myself. I don't own a flash drive because I don't need a flash drive. So a lot of people want that USB functionality, but really I've never needed or wanted the USB function. Uh, we we uh, tell people, um, not really, because it doesn't do punctuation. It's not going to be 100% accurate, but we've noticed it's about 95% accurate. It's great for brainstorming for a paper. You know, you can walk around and you can talk a lot faster than you type, so you just sit there and talk to get your idea down. But I would not suggest trying to write a paper with it, because then you have to do punctuation, you have to format it right, and it can be very difficult. <laughs> that was a loaded question. Um, it, it does not play Flash, uh, and, and, that w so, and what I've noticed, though, is most everything uh, I need to do doesn't need Flash. Um, I've almost never run into the problem where I need Flash, b because, partly because I um, do, like, the majority of videos are a lot in Flash, but the majority of videos are on YouTube, and YouTube plays on here. So that's how I watch all my videos. So I rarely run into the issue of playing Flash, um, and I honestly think that issue, you know, you're going to eventually, um, a lot of people are switching over to HTML5 coding and coding that works well on the iPad as well. So where are you going to use the cloud for you? So I know Cloud is really Apple-based, but like Google is in your email? Well, uh, everything I do uh, is really primarily Google. Uh, I love Google. I love Google products. I love everything that they, they can do. And um, it's, it's all synced like my documents are all in Google Docs. And just to give you an idea of how, if you are not familiar with Google Docs, it's a way to have an interactive document with multiple people that you can collaborate on. For example, how I run all my team meetings. Like I said, I manage a team of 30 people. And what I do is I have a meeting overview Google document. 
And whoever's in charge of the meeting is in charge of putting the agenda in that document. And everyone else, as soon as they put in that agenda, everyone else sees it because it's live. And then during my meeting, everyone has the agenda up on their iPad or computer. And rather than have everyone take their own notes, I assign one person to take notes during the meeting, and they put it in a blue font, and they put it in that Google document. And again, it's live, so we're collaborating on this Google Doc. And I have a meeting overview document with my, um, with my notes all the way down from a, a year ago, all my meetings on one long Google document. So if my team members ever miss a meeting, they can go back and check on it, and they can see what they missed. And it's really useful for a company especially. But when I have student projects, I, uh, I'm usually, I volunteer to be the project leader because I like to be in charge. And um, I will tell my team members to, we're going to work on Google Docs and we're going to collaborate on one document rather than you do a, word, you do a, a document, you do a document, and then we're going to combine them into one because you overlap a lot. <laughs> Apple uh, does not pay us or anything. I, I can safely say that we've, uh, single-handedly sold millions of dollars of Apple product. Uh, but they do not fund us in any way. Um, they really honestly don't help us out at all. As, and we really like them too, but Apple doesn't. So. <laughs> Where all my keynotes and pages are stored on the device so I can access them without internet. But it's constantly being synced to iTunes and to my computer, so I never lose them. They're constantly being automatically synced. Yes. Yes. Same idea. It depends on what I'm doing. Dropbox to me is kind of the same style as cloud. I, I can pull up my, what a Dropbox is, is you create an account with Dropbox, and you have this little icon that can go on your computer, your iPad, and it stores all your documents. It's like a place where you can pull it from any computer. And so I have a Dropbox with movies on it, files on it that I can access from any computer. So if we go back, I have my B-Law documents um, for chapter, I had to study for a chapter. So in Dropbox, I have all my Word documents right here. So I can just keep going down and I have all the reviews for my classes in here. And that way I can never lose them. They're always in my Dropbox account. I can pull them from any computer. And again, that's the idea of kind of cloud-based um, saving and, and stuff like that. Yes, it essentially does the same thing. I can't lose it. If I, again, if I throw this out the window and log into Dropbox, I will still have those documents. Yes. <laughs> Well, um, I've actually got, um, wherever it is, this, which is a, a stylus. And what I do it on here, um, I do great artwork on here because I'm an awesome artist. And notice the sarcasm. But I also do all my PDFs on here and all my legal documents um, on here. Again, I'm completely digital. So uh, we probably shouldn't show that. I think it has a number on it that we shouldn't show. <laughs> but you can see, um, I was just just playing with it, and I was able to write in notes. And for math, I use the stylus a lot. I can zoom in or do whatever I need to. But if we go to, let's find the, here we go. Here's a document I had to fill out, and I was just messing with it. I started checking off stuff, underlining it. But I use this to sign papers and, and different things like that, like you can see right there. I promise that's how my signature looks in real life. It's that bad. <laughs> but, um... You know, so have I lost the ability to write? No, I still occasionally pull out a, the old antique paper and start writing something, but you know, I, I definitely do a lot more typing than I do writing. Yes? I, this is what I tell people, I type a lot faster than I do on the iPad than a regular keyboard. And it's partly because I never learned the proper way to type. I didn't type with all 10 fingers on a normal keyboard. I kind of used the claw is what I call it. <laughs> but this is how I typed on a keyboard. And it must have been just, it was meant to be that I type on an iPad because, um, I, like I said, I type all on here, but I don't use the full fingers. It's very hard to do. So once you get used to this, especially if you're already kind of familiar with it, it's very easy to type on. 
And uh, just a couple days ago, someone told me a story of their daughter failed keyboarding class, and she's 10 years old. And he said that she could type like a whiz on the iPad and the touch screens, but she couldn't do a regular keyboard. And that also was funny to me because it showed that there's a generation after me that is already becoming the new digital natives even more than I am, you know. So, you know, you see a six-year-old that will pick this up and start typing away on it, and they just, they, they get it, and they're really fast on it. So, you know, it's all a matter of adjusting to it, but again, I prefer typing on this than a regular keyboard, and I know most of you are more comfortable with a regular keyboard. Yes? I, the, uh, he asked if I could repeat the link to our website, and it's just iSchool Initiative, which is in the background of my iPad, and it's iSchoolInitiative.com. And just while we're on it, um, again, we've started a digital learning revolution, a movement of parents, students, and educators coming together to demand change in our classroom. And I encourage each of you to go there and sign up for our iSchool Advocate program. And also sign up for our newsletters. And while we're on it, we just created a new program which you might be very interested in called Donate to Educate. It's where tech-savvy people who are upgrading to the latest technology can donate their old mobile devices like their iPad 1 to iSchool Initiative because technology is always coming out. So we've asked people to donate their old mobile devices to iSchool Initiative and then teachers can come apply on our website to be um, chosen for a classroom set of mobile devices. So that might be something you are all interested in. It's a program we just started only a week ago. I think we have time for one more question. Um, right back here. Uh, on the website, iSchoolInitiative.com, it's educational apps on the left. You'll see, I'll just pull it up right here. Oop. Okay, so once you go to the home page, you'll see all the links on the right. And... Uh, <laughs> well, I'm glad I looked at this because I recently updated my website and I think I forgot to include the link to our educational applications. <laughs> so, so it used to be there, I promise, and I will fix it tonight to where it's on there. So I'm glad you mentioned that they were not on there. So tonight I will go and... Maybe, did someone see where they are? Oh, that's where, that's where as a teacher you can go to apply for mobile devices if you would like to, a chance to get classroom set. So anyway, uh, to, just to conclude, I really would encourage each and every one of you to join our revolution and, uh, and please sign up for our iSchool Advocate program. If you have any other questions, feel free to come up after and ask me. Thank you.